Praise the Lord for each and every one of you. I am thine, O oh Lord. I have heard thy voice, and it told thy love for me. But I long to rise in the arms of faith and be closer grown to Lord, to the cross where thine has died. Grow me nearer, nearer, blessed Lord, to thy precious bleeding side. Consecrate Service, Lord, by the power of grace divine. Let my soul look up with a steadfast hope, and my will be lost in the Lord, to the cross where thine has died. Grow me nearer, nearer, blessed Lord, to thy precious bleeding side. Once again, praise the Lord, everyone. We thank and praise the Lord for another Sunday morning session. We thank and praise the Lord for another day. Even though it's Easter, we praise and thank him for another day, another second, another hour. Thank you, Jesus. At this time, it's prayer time. If you have a request, just wave your hand. The Lord knows your request. At this time, Sister Butler, would you lead us in a quick word of prayer? And then we're going to bring our Sunday school teacher on. Let's say amen as she come. Praise the Lord. Uh, let us stand, those that are able to stand, and let's bow our heads. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we thank you, Lord God, for this beautiful Easter Sunday, oh God, that you have blessed, Lord God, us to come out, that we might hear your word, Lord God, that we might do better, Lord God, than what we did on last year. Help us, oh God, to just absorb your word, Lord God, to love you, Lord God, with all of our hearts, Lord God, all of our minds, soul, and strength. Bless those, Lord God, throughout the nation, Lord God. Help us that we'll learn more appreciation for you, Lord God. Bless the Sunday school teachers, Lord God, all those, Lord God, that will be assembling across the nation. Bless their homes and their families, Lord God, that we will take heed to your word and amend our ways daily. And we'll be careful to praise in the blessed name of the Lord Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. Once again, praise the Lord. And we're going to bring our teacher on this morning, the elder Stanley Porter. Let's say amen as he comes. Praise, praise the Lord, everybody. We thank and praise God for his goodness, for his mercy. Uh, we thank you for tuning in on this morning in Jackson, Mississippi, where the slogan is, where real soldiers are trained. And we thank God for you, and we invite you to come be with us on this morning, where Pastor Langford Porter Sr. is the pastor of this church and the shepherd of this flock. We thank God for him on this morning and his family. Today, we thank God for blessing us to be here to be uh, presenting to you the lesson on today, which will say that this subject is this glorious gospel. So, my as all participants said, glory, glory to his name. Come on, lift up your head and say, glory. To his name, hallelujah, the glorious gospel. Last week we talked about the good shepherd. How many know who the good shepherd is on this morning, hallelujah. And we thank and praise God for sending his son in the person of Jesus Christ. And that's what we'll be talking about this morning, the glorious gospel. 
The Bible says if an angel come, anything come beside preaching anything what you hear today, the gospel of Jesus Christ, let him be a curse. So we thank, praise God, that we've been baptized in Jesus' name. We've been filled with the precious gift of the Holy Ghost. If you got the Holy Ghost, say hallelujah. 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 We thank you. We ask you to pray for us on this morning as we attempt to bring you the word of God with demonstration that you may have a word to hear what thus said the Lord. And our lesson focus first will be John chapter 3, verse 16 through 17, where it say, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. And who is his son? Jesus What's his name? Jesus. Hallelujah. His name is Jesus. But whosoever believe in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. And who want to live forever? I tell folks, I ain't, I don't, I, I ain't thinking about dying. I want to live forever. I want to live for God can use me. Uh, I'm, I'm looking to be in the rapture, so I'm not thinking about dying. <laughs> so I don't, I don't want to die. I want to live forever. So that's why it's important that we find out the plan of salvation and live a life that is pleasing to God and find out the, the principles and the qualification that it takes for us to get in the church. We can't join the church. You got to be born again. Amen? So if you've not been born again, you need to find out what it takes to be born again through the water baptism in Jesus' name. Uh, hallelujah. I got baptized in Jesus' name in 1976. Oh, what a blessing. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And since 1976, the Lord filled me with the precious gift of the Holy Ghost, the 11th month, the 7th day, 1977. And I think that's been about 42 years. And I thank and praise God that the Holy Ghost still works. The Holy Ghost still revived. The Holy Ghost still want to be kept. Hallelujah, because some things have been put in place for us to have this blessed hope. Let the church say hallelujah. So God gave us his only begotten son, Sister Mary. It went way back when God spoke the word. And the word became flesh. And the flesh walked among us in the person of who? Jesus Christ. The scripture says, for God so loved the world that he gave us his only begotten son, and God spoke to word to Gabriel and said, go down and tell Mary that she had been found favor among women. Let's give the women a hand, hallelujah. Let's give you a hand, hallelujah, because God used her to bring the Savior into the world. Glory be to God, hallelujah, for his mother Mary. Glory be to God for the things he spoke in place. In the flesh walked among us in the name of Jesus, hallelujah. And I thank and praise God for that because it's a great experience to know and have the knowledge what God went through and, and sent things to put in place for you and I to have a right to be in the tree of life. And who is the tree of life? So we know the tree of life was in the garden. But when Adam and Eve uh, did what they did, God took the tree of life out of the garden. So God got another tree of life in the person of Jesus Christ. Let's give the Lord a hand for that. Hallelujah. For the things that he went through. Hallelujah. I'm glad to be here. I'm glad to have the, the Holy Ghost. As I said earlier, I'm glad to be uh, in the church of the living God. I'm glad to be affiliated with the peoples of God because God's peoples are precious. Hallelujah. He said we are the children of a what? Raw priesthood. But God is an everlasting God. It said, whosoever believe in him should not perish, but have eternal life. Think about eternal life. It's a place that you want to want to be in, that you'll never die, that you'll never uh, go away, that you'll be always have life. And I thank and praise God. He said, I will give you life that you may have it, what? more abundantly 
Think about the word abundantly. Huh? Think about that word abundantly. I will give it to you that you may have it more abundantly. Hallelujah. And that's a blessing to have it more abundantly because the Holy Ghost is the Spirit of God and it will keep you alive. That's why we can come boldly to the throne of grace and cast our cares upon him for he cares for us. Amen. The glorious gospel is talking about Jesus Christ, the things that he done, the ways that he suffered for. When God spoke the word to Gabriel and Gabriel went to Mary and said, she shall bring forth his son. They shall call his name Emmanuel. The word he looking at Emmanuel means God with us in the flesh. Isaiah spoke it in uh, chapter 8, verse 7, 8. He spoke the word. He spoke it pre-existent that this was going to happen, and we are living in it today. Let the church say hallelujah. So I believe that we can, we can live right, we can do right, but you got to be in the will of God. You have to repent of your sins. You have to be baptized in Jesus' name and filled with the Holy Ghost. When I was reading over the lesson, so many things, Minister Brooke, that came to my mind, the Lord is it's so much, you, you, can't, you can't even, you can't think about it. Hallelujah. So I'm thinking about the eternal life that God has given us. He said, I will give you life. He has already given us life. He said, you shall we have, see how power after what? The Holy Ghost. What is the Holy Ghost? It is the Spirit of God. It is the life. For the Holy Ghost will quicken our what? Mortal bodies. Hallelujah. Ain't nothing in God dead. Amen. Ain't nothing in God dead. He said the joy of the Lord is our what? Strength. So where is your joy? <laughs> where is your peace? Where is your hope? What is your, your, your mind? He said, Paul said, let this mind be in you that was also in Christ Jesus. Let the church say hallelujah. For God sent not his own son into the world to condemn it. The world. But that the world through him might be saved. So it was a purpose. It was a plan for the purpose for us to have this blessed hope. And somebody had to give a life that we might have this life, a life given to us. They didn't take it. They didn't take his life. He gave his life. Amen. Amen. Let the church say hallelujah. Mr. Brooke, you had a person? Go ahead. How many got that saved this morning? How many glad to say, come on, let's get a smile on your face. Hallelujah. How many glad they really saved? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Been filled with the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. I'm glad about it. I'm excited about it. Hallelujah. Glory be to God that they might be saved. Yes. Saved from what? What you saved from? How were you saved? How, how were you behaving before you got saved? How were you acting before you got saved? What were you doing before you got saved? Amen? Amen. Go ahead, Ms. Brooks. The question in the lesson, uh, the focus verse here, it talks about, but that the world might be saved through him. Right. Now, we all is part of the world, the cosmos, the system, our past, our present. So what, how would you encourage us and teach us what did he come to save us from? That the world through him might be saved. We might be saved from what? What did he save us from? Through him, we might be saved. Saved from what? Saved from the life of destruction. <laughs> we, we, we are in the world, but we're not of the world. Jesus said, when I was in the world, I was the light, right, of the world. But now, ye are the lights. Let your lights shine before men and women that you may, that he may be glorified. So the light that we came from, you know how you lived. You know the things that you was doing before you got saved. 
Huh? You know what you were capable of doing? But when, when, the word, when the word found you, what were you doing? I was thinking about that last night. When I went to the temple in 1976, I didn't, I didn't have no Holy Ghost. I was, I was going to church and everything, but it wasn't no change in my life. I was still doing the same thing. I was still cussing. I was still drinking. I was still uh, doing the things that I wanted to do. Uh, uh, it's it ungodly. He, he saved it from un ungodliness, uh, unrighteousness. That's what he saved it from ourselves. But he gave us a mind. If God don't give you a mind, if he don't grant you access, Ephesians 3, 16, God had to grant us access. I didn't have no mind to be saved this way because I was going to, doing things, singing in the choir, uh, looking at girls, sitting in the congregation, looking at girls, ungodliness. You know, the Bible is safe for some of us. You know where you came from. You know what you were doing. So he don't, don't think it's strange. So he, had to, he had to save us from ourselves, and he gave us access to come into his kingdom. But it had to be some changes. Repentance had to come forth. Huh? Your mind had to be changed, and God had to grant that. You can't change your mind. Man, I'm going to get right uh, next year. I'm gonna, you can't get yourself right. God had to get you right. God had to give you a mind to do. And that's right. He got to give you a mind to even come. So when I came on a Sunday night, I heard the word. I don't know how, I don't just can't know how I got up and walked in front of all them folks and went up and got baptized. It was about the grace of God. He saved me from myself. He saved me to be saved. And he granted me repentance. I had a mind. I got the Holy Ghost. You talking about a zeal, man. I used to tell them folks about the Holy Ghost. <laughs> They didn't want to hear it, but I was happy. I, I, I was full. I, I had it. I, I know I had it. I still got it. <laughs> the Bible said there are higher heights and deeper depths in God, but God gave his son that you and I may have a right to the tree of life and what we are enjoying today. When God spoke the word and the word became flesh in the person of Jesus Christ, he became a baby. He was born in, in Bethlehem or Judea and swallowed in, the, in, in, in a manger. All that, we know all that. We know how he was raised as a child. And the Bible said from a child, he learned what? Obedience. So if he learned obedience as a child, when we was coming up, we learned obedience. Huh? At, at, at the boomer, the baby boomers. The baby boom, we learned how to go to church. Our parents took us to church, whether you wanted to go or not. They had to be taught. So Jesus was a child, but he learned obedience when he was left in Jerusalem three days and his parents were gone on a journey and they found out he was in the camp. They had to go back and look for him. And what was he sitting? With the lawyers and the doctors and asking questions and giving answers, they were with the Son of God. But what the point is, people didn't believe. The scripture said, Boy, you, some of them don't believe, shall they unbelief make the word of God of none effect. Let God be what? I'm going to get you, brother Billy. But every man a liar. God did this for you and I. The son learned obedience. When your father and mama got on, don't you know we've been looking for you three days? He said, oh, you know, it might be about my father's business. <laughs> he spoke out. But Mary knew who he was, but it wasn't his time to. So he learned, went, went on back, and learned obedience, grew up, learned how to work the, the business, carpentry and work and all that. It's a learning process. So when the time came for him to be about his father's business, the time went forward. And he, when he went forward, he healed the sick. He raised the dead. He gave sight to the blind. Thank you, stand up, Brother Clark. Is Brother Clark back there? Walk around. This man walking around. Went home. But look what God did through prayer. Jesus healed folks. He saved them. He brought them back. Now he's walking among us. Hallelujah. That's what the, 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 the body of Christ can do. 
Pray in season, out of season. Pray. So that's what it's all, that's what we're for. But the Bible said we are helpers, one to what? To another. So if we don't pray for one another, uh, Proverbs 27, verse 14, iron sharpen what? So we got to help one another while we're in the kingdom of God. We know that Jesus Christ died on the, uh, on the cross. We know how he was beaten. You can pick that up in Isaiah 53. Who have believed that we report? For he was bruised. He was agonized. Huh? And the disciples, they weren't no way around. The women were there. Huh? Jesus told Peter, man, the devil desired to slip you in sweet. But Jesus, I prayed for you. We prayed for this brother. And God delivered him. Hallelujah. Let the church say hallelujah. So that's what salvation is about. That's what our business is here. To, to help get saved, be a witness, be a living epistle through the word of God. And be a candidate. Be a citizen in the kingdom of God, praying always in the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost will lead you and guide you through all perfect peace. That's what Jesus gave his life for the church. That the church will be saved. That you and I will be able to look to walk in the newness of life. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. He gave his life. He laid it down. My little grandbaby uh, had to go to the doctor to get a shot. It took three nurses to hold her down to get that needle. Huh? Three, it took three nurses. And she was kicking and bumping and everything. They finally got, a, got the medicine in her that she needed. But they didn't have to hold Jesus down. Huh? They didn't have to have no, no rope to hold his hand down. He, he, for your sins and mine. Before the foundation of the world, God chose you and me. He predestinated you and me to be here where we are today, sitting in heavenly places. If you believe that, say hallelujah. If you believe that he's a glorious God, say hallelujah. Lift up your hands and say glory. I'm glad to be in the kingdom of God. I'm glad to be sanctified, motivated, and dedicated, and concentrated with the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost is alive. It ain't dead. They sing the song, God's not dead. He's still alive. So when we pray for this brother, the prayers of the righteous of Baalit merch. We are the sons of God. A price was paid. A life was given. So you want to know why Jesus came? He came that you and I might be saved from ourselves from this wretched, untaught generation that we're living in today where men and women and boys and girls are lovers of themselves more than lovers of God, more to save the creature more than the creator because the enemy desires to sift us as wheat. That's why God gave us a son. God is a spirit. The Bible said they that worship God must worship him in spirit and in truth. That's why he filled us with the Holy Ghost for we can worship him in the spirit and truth. For we can come into the sanctuary and lift up our hands and say glory to be God of our salvation. He brought salvation. He laid his life on the line. And folks don't believe it. I googled up some Sister Mary yesterday in the Result I got on the internet, uh, Jesus been dead over 2,000 years. What, what have you done? You know what scripture came to me? A fool have said in his heart, there is no God. Do y'all know any fools? All right. Then. <laughs> Who woke you up this morning? Who started you on your way? Who gave you his grace and mercy? Well, he said, goodness and mercy shall follow me all to the days. I'm going to put it into our life. Because I want to live, but God can use me. Anywhere, any day, any time. And I don't want to walk around with the wrong countenance on my face. But the Bible said we don't rise against flesh and blood, but against principalities and power and darkness of this world. The spirits are toxic. They'll attack you and me. They'll attack Jesus. He was humiliated. He 
We were beaten, flesh torn open, blood going all everywhere, the nerves in the body subtracting, the pain that he felt. I said, who have believed the report for he was bruised? And by his stripes, we are healed. But some of them don't believe it in that. Come on. I just kind of want to take it back off of what um, Brother Brooks um, questioned a little bit. Okay. Um, to further that, as the best word I can say, I can just use myself. Before I became to, before I came to the church, yes, I didn't understand the idea of being saved per se. Okay. So in saying that um, and coming to church, you know, even being out there worldly or whatever, I didn't understand that. And one day I came to church. Okay. So in the midst of that, I'm still not understanding about being saved and everything. And I'm thinking that a lot of times people think that the church is trying to condemn them when actually the church is trying to save them. And a lot of times when we're going through the things that are ungodly, it's that stronghold that is keeping us from hearing that we're trying to be saved. So the question is, the question is, that's why, well, the point behind that, that's why the person that, the church per se, that's why we have to be careful and let our light shine before others and everything because it is very important for that to happen because while that person is going through that stronghold, they're not going to understand a lot of different things and stuff like that about being saved and things of that nature. Um, so the bottom line is, the question is, when you have situations like that, what do you do when you have situations like that? When you hear the word, the word of God will set you free. But if you don't have, you can have an ear to hear. It's just like the man that planted in the, the corn, uh, in, the, in his garden. He planted corn. He planted different type of seeds. Some seeds came up, fell on good ground. We used to, we used to plant in the field. We used to plant uh, ash potatoes and sweet potatoes. You get your ground broken up. You're in the process of getting ready. You got to have. You got to, have, you got to want to be saved. You have to denounce the things in your life that are dishonest. If you don't work on them and fast and pray, they ain't going nowhere. So when you get rid of them, they're going to come back. Jesus went in the wilderness 40 days and what? 40 nights. And who came to talk to him? The tempter. Huh? Know who Jesus was. Know that he had the power. Know that he was baptized in the river of John. And God said, all power. Heaven and earth is in my hand, right? Acts 1 8 says, You shall receive power after the Holy Ghost come up on you. So when you come into the knowledge that you're not saved, the Bible said, Be sure your sins will find you out. You know what, you know what sin is. The enemy didn't he didn't he didn't pick, he wasn't prejudiced. He, he went to do what Jesus was in the wilderness. If thou be this, do that. And Jesus said, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word. So when you live by the word of God and put God's word in your heart, when the enemy comes, the spirit of God will lift up a standard through the word of God. God's word is the spirit, right? In the beginning was the word and the word was God. Whatever God spoke, it came into existence as though it was not. Before you were born, before you got in your mother's womb, before you were breathing, you were predestinated to be here today uh, being an armor barrier or being married to Sister Nisi in the church, sitting in heavenly places. So, God put you in the church. If you step out the church, huh? The Bible says, if any man put his hand to the gospel plow, huh, and look back, I used to plow a mule from 7 o'clock in the morning to 12 o'clock. The mule stopped at 12 o'clock. He didn't pull the plow no more. He backed up because he knew it was time to get fed. Amen? 
So when you know to do right, Paul said, every time I intended to do good, evil was present. The devil went to Jesus, took him to the highest temple. All this will I give unto you. How can you give me something that I already got? How can you take something from me that God has already given to me? Huh? Knowledge is power. And power is knowledge. And once you learn the principle, Mr. Brooklyn and his brother used to teach about principle. Every time they got up to teach Bible class degree, it was principles. We have to live by the principles. We have to take God's word. We know what God done through his son, Jesus Christ. We know he rose from the dead. We know when he came out the tomb, they didn't, they didn't believe him. They thought it was a ghost. Some of them ran. Uh, but when he was walking down the road, uh, Emmanuel, was Emmanuel, those two men were walking on the road, and they were talking about the man. Don't you know what happened? And, uh, and Jesus went right there beside him. It, what, what, what happened? What, what did he do? He was listening to him. Going on with him. Until they broke bread. And they found out <laughs> he, he was alive. Huh? I'd already told you this in the scripture. So if people don't believe it in the, the Old Testament for our learning, saints, and our admonition. I told my daughter yesterday, we don't have no excuse when it comes to doing what God has told us to do. Whether we do it or we don't. Whether you be obedient or you don't. The Bible said obedience is better than a sacrifice. Jesus was obedient unto death. When he was in the garden of Gethsemane, praying with his disciples, asked him, said, if you get praying with me, everybody can say that. One what? Everybody say that. Somebody still ain't saying it. One more time. One hour. <laughs> the Bible says, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. It ain't what goes into a man defiles him. It's what comes out of it. Because God knows the heart. He knows the intent. He knows if you come in here to get a wife. He knows if you come in here to get a, a sweetheart. He knows if you're coming in here to be a goat. But God claims us as sheep. We are the sheep of his pasture. He is our shepherd. But God give us pastors out of his own heart to protect, to watch out for the sheep. Amen. My daddy had, I'm gonna get you this man. My daddy had hunting dogs. We had to keep them dogs. Whether he was there or not, we had to feed them. We had to make sure they were clean. We had to make sure they had a place to lay down. Because when he let them out, they had to run them deers. Them walkers are some running dogs. They will run to their tongue. I ain't gonna say fall out. They'll run to they completely wore out. Jesus gave his life for you and I. He predestinated us, brought us out of darkness into his light. Huh? Into his light. And we are the lights of the world in dark places. We are the lights in our neighborhood. We are the lights sitting at the red light. Huh? We are the lights when we're going down 55 South, 57, uh, 27, Highway 13, Highway 18, wherever you go, you're a light. Go down the highway at night with no lights on your car on a dark road. You will run over something. The Holy Ghost will guide you. It will keep you in perfect peace. Ain't nobody in this life got the Holy Ghost walking around with an anger problem, with bitterness in their heart. If you haven't denounced it out of your spirit. Those are toxic. T-O-X-I-C. Ain't that what you spell toxic? Those are toxics in your spirit. And if you don't get them out, they ain't going nowhere. You're a cuss in a heartbeat. Get mad and throw some stuff. <laughs> huh? Come on, uh, Sister Mayor. Glory. Praise and praise. I was thinking about uh, this glorious gospel. Yes, ma'am. And a, a lot of times, a lot of people don't realize what the gospel of Jesus Christ is all about. Yes, ma'am. Because the gospel is the life, the death, 
and yeah. the resurrection mm -hmm. of Jesus. You know, and a lot of people, you know, I, uh, my husband and I, sometimes we look at this movie, well, two movies that says God is not dead. And it's God is not dead too. And a lot of times people say there is no God or they mm. don't believe that Jesus rose from the grave, but he's alive and well. Mm. Jesus is alive and well. And, so, and I was thinking about, uh, it's an old hymn that says, must Jesus bear the cross alone? Yes, ma'am. And all the world go free. No, there is a cross for you and I, and there is a cross for me. So Jesus cannot bear the cross alone. We must bear, we must live the life, the life, the saved life Amen. that Jesus resurrected in us. Amen. You know, because we was dead in sin and transgressions, but he came that we will have life and life more abundantly. So a lot of times it's because people don't know the truth. When you don't know, you'll stay in bondage. Amen. I remember a, a, a sermon one time Bishop Coleman preached, if I was a slave to sin, I'd run away. So sometimes we just have to, we have to, if you don't know, but a lot of times people refuse to know because they won't go to church, and when they go to church, they won't even take a Bible. Hmm. You, and, you know, so you just take whatever someone else says. But we just have to know that the love of Christ is shed abroad in our hearts. Amen. Let's give the Lord a hand for that. She said, God is not dead. He's still alive. Huh? Uh, I just, I just, I just, uh, it's, Sister, Sister Shane is a good thing. Huh? And I'm glad I got it because I ain't going to say I was, I'm, I was one no good. The Bible said all our goodness before him was else. Be at the rags. And I'm a, I'd be ashamed to tell you some of the things I did. I used to ride around a shotgun and a 38. But that's the life that I chose. Because I didn't, I went to church. But going to church on a Sunday, say, oh, I went to church today, but they, it, don't, it don't change anything. There's no power. Huh? You cannot run an automobile without a battery. And it ain't going to run with no, no fuel in it. Then come to me top saying gas and say fuel. The new word is fuel. Huh? So the Holy Ghost will fuel you. But you got to fast and pray. You got to keep God's word in your heart, in your mind, meditating on him, keeping songs of melody in your heart because the enemy will throw some stuff on you. I was talking to a brother, and he was, he was going through some stuff. I said, man, that ain't nothing but a misometer. And he turned around, and a misometer fell on me. <laughs> I, had, I had to tell myself, I don't got a misometer. <laughs> I had to deal with it. I had to get it right. Past parents, that word, that word, that parents, that word, parents, friends. Yeah, how you say that word, man? Yes, ma'am. We, 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 we have to help one another. Let bitch go, we, we, we ain't made it, we ain't made it yet, Mr. Brooks. Huh? He said, well done, that good and faithful yet. But the Bible said, work while it's the day, because when night coming, no man can work. Let the church say hallelujah. You can't work with your arms full. You can't apologize with your arms full. Jesus didn't know no sin, but he came to bring you and I out of the right way, in the right way, on the right way, for the right way. <laughs> Let this mind be in you that was also in Christ Jesus. You got to be lofty in the Holy Ghost. Let the Spirit of God may rise and keep you in the right standard. He said, all thou raise, acknowledge me, and I will direct your paths. But if you don't acknowledge, you ain't going to do it. What must I do to be saved? In the book of Acts, the Holy Ghost came on the day of Pentecost, when the feasts were going on. A lot of folks around. And Jesus blows, he, he blows some wind on them. It said, it came as a rushing mighty wind. How many of y'all been blowed this morning? 
If you've been blown with the Holy Ghost, say hallelujah. It ain't nothing to be played with. Our souls are too precious. Hell is too hot. Eternity is too long for you to be seen and die and go to hell. Bible said, why is some of them don't believe that Jesus Christ rose from the dead? They were there. They was eyewitnesses. Luke said they was eyewitnesses. He, 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 he went to the folk there was eyewitnesses. Huh? They didn't believe it. But the Bible said, blessed are those who have not seen. Let the church say hallelujah. Blessed are those who have not seen, but yet believe. The Bible said no man can say that Jesus Christ is Lord but by the Holy Ghost. And my friend, if you're listening on the highway, byway, tech two, tack two, whatever that is, or is it tech two? Tic tac. Tic tac? Okay. Well, I ain't got nothing on my phone. I ain't got a, a Facebook. It'll, it'll, it'll corrupt your mind. And whatever your eyes see is the gateway to your soul. And you see all this stuff, it's going to put some tragedy in your life. Evil communication is on TikTok. A lot of ungodliness is on Facebook. And there ain't no host to play with the Holy Ghost. Huh? You can't pretend. The Bible says, if this gospel be here, huh? which is not here, one Lord, one faith, one Jesus, who died on the cross, that you and I may have a right to the tree of life. Paul said, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Sister Mary, stand up. God healed her. Thank you. Mother Tidwell, stand up. God healed her. You ain't got to stand up. You're, do you feel like standing up? All right, then. Mother Tidwell, when we was in the old sanctuary, this is my sister. She had some type of cancer. Her hair, all her hair came out. Huh? She was completely bald. One Sunday she came to church. I said, pull that thing off your head. Don't be ashamed to walk in Christ. Next thing I know, head full of gray. Huh? <laughs> My wife was sick Saturday night, a Friday night. Her blood sugar dropped down to 45. And I looked over there, I said, baby, I said, let's, let's pray. And I touched her shoulder, and that prayer that Jesus said, I will that thou be made whole. Glory! Her blood sugar jumped up to 95 less than a minute. Let the church say hallelujah. The Bible say out of our mouth are the issues of life and death. So when you speak to somebody, speak to them life that they may have it more abundantly. That you be able to walk down the streets and tell somebody, I'm a child of the king. Let somebody say glory. And I'm glad to know the glorious God that I serve. Let the church say hallelujah. I want to tell you, he rose from the dead. That you and I may have a right to the tree of life. Huh? That's what it's about. Huh? I can run in Christ. Hallelujah. I was hurting so bad, I set the Ida in my knees and leg, one of the other leg, the eye leg, bonk. I'm going to call you these ball jerks. <laughs> Knocking, going out. It's gone. The Bible says, that the Holy Ghost will quicken our mortal bodies. When Jesus was in the tomb, 
and they rolled away the stone. <laughs> huh? He told was it Thomas he said, Thomas is now in the room. He, Jesus didn't open the door. He walked through the door. He said, Sep, I feel the nail prints in his hand. And I, the prison in his side. He said, I will not believe. Huh? And Jesus walked through the door. He, he had a glorified body. He didn't, have to, he didn't have to open it for his body to go through there. He, he walked through it. I want that body that won't feel no more pain from these knees. Huh? <laughs> I was talking to Pastor Porter. He, he was talking Wednesday night. He, when you don't get on his street, imagine the street. I said, well, where you go up there, they have a, a duplex. He said, no, sir. <laughs> How many know what a duplex is? When you get to heaven, you don't want no duplex. He said, I'm going to pray be proud of you. Imagine. Ain't nobody going to be on the next wall beside you. Ain't going to be no duplex. He said, if I go away, I'm going away to prepare a place for who? For you. He said, in my father's house. This world is not worthy of the peoples of God. For the Bible says we are the children of a raw priesthood. Dip up their hands and say glory. If you're making preparation to leave here, say glory. And when he come back, the Bible says the dead in Christ shall rise. And we are there walking around on our job, grabbing trucks and bagging up to the dock and and. and and unhooking a, a, a dude, the, what you call them things? Them, them double trailers. They call them dollars, don't they? Attached to dollars. He ain't gonna have to worry about unhooking no more dollars. <laughs> but I said, we will change in the moment, moment in the twinkling of an eye. But a bit of you ain't have to go up to the golf club no more. Huh? It'll be all over with. But we have to occupy. We have to occupy. We still have to tell about his goodness. We still have to learn of his mercy. We got to tell somebody. We can't be, we can't be stingy with this stuff, Brother Al. Huh? Brother Al, we can't be stingy with it. We got to tell somebody. When I got the Holy God, you'd be walking through trailers and preaching and folk come out there and see what we're going to do. They thought somebody was going to trade, but I was, I was glad to have the Holy Ghost. <laughs> huh? I was glad to be baptized in Jesus' name and be in the kingdom of God. So don't, don't, take, it, don't take it short now because this is the real thing. There is no other gospel. Huh? Jesus told Peter, upon what? Everybody said, what? This rock, I will build my church. And the gates of hell shall not, will not, can't not, do not prevail against it. I put some, I didn't change the word, you put a little, little extra in there. <laughs> the gates of hell shall not prevail. Several weeks ago, Brother D was confounded to his wheelchair. Huh? Somebody pray. He's walking around here now. Huh? Going where you want to go. Huh? Let the church say hallelujah. hallelujah. We are living witnesses. I fell off a building in 1983 and broke my neck. Fell 10 feet on my head. And the doctor said he don't even see how I got up. By the grace of God. Drove to the university hospital. And the doctor told me all I had was concussion. Broken neck. Will God keep you? Will God protect you? He's our open doors. And our clothes. <laughs> you don't want God to close no doors on you. You don't want God to call your number. The Bible said, be careful how we entertain angels. Because we entertain. Strangers, I mean, you could have hit me on that now. <laughs> help me up in there. <laughs> like Deacon Levin said, help me up in here now. <laughs> Be careful how you entertain strangers, thanks to God, because sometimes you entertain angels 
unaware. And if you turn them away with a bitter spirit, a, a, a nasty whatever, you know how we do. And you, and you be rude to them. The Bible said, we'll come, but woe unto him that bring them. What that scripture said that come? Offenses, yeah. Offenses is going to come. But woe unto the man or woman that brings them. Because God's going to take care of you. Yes, ma'am. I want to say what? Over 50 years ago, almost 50 years ago, when my brother-in-law witnessed to me, I didn't debate it. I didn't question it. I just believed the word of God. I didn't understand it, but I believed it. That Friday night, September 13, 1974, I got baptized in Jesus' name. And then next Tuesday, the 17th, I believed what he was saying. I didn't understand it, but I believed that I had to repent and God filled me with the Holy Ghost. If we just believe what God say, don't question it, don't debate it, just believe it. God's word will come reality in our lives. Let the church say hallelujah. Let's do our lesson connection. It's a Jesus conversation with Nicodemus. That Nicodemus was a ruler, a teacher of the law. Know the law. We know what's right. But do we do it? Do we believe it? We have to believe that the scripture has said. And he said, out of our better shall flow what? Do you believe that? So if we do that, saints of God, I just don't believe in being sick. I just, I'm just going to be honest with you. I'm going to be transparent. <laughs> I don't believe in being sick. I don't, I don't want to be sick. I told the Lord, I got some bad down in my bag. I said, Lord, eh? I said, I can't do nothing for you. I can't show you, Lord. I can't move. I said, Lord, I know the pain and the agony that you went through. But, Lord, if you just can have mercy on my back. I couldn't even sleep in the bed. All night long when I prayed that prayer 10 years ago at 3 o'clock in the morning, I was in the baby bed, a little bit of small bed. Guess what the next morning? Been, rugging, been going on ever since. Still picking up truck tires. Huh? Still towed a five-gallon bucket. Huh? If the Lord don't keep the city, the watchman what? Walking in, working in vain. So we men, we got to pray. The women's already praying. But the brothers, we got to pray. <laughs> huh? But God so loved the world that he gave us his son in the person of Jesus Christ. It said, if you had a chance to ask God why he loved us, what do you think his response would be? Think about that. If you had the chance to ask God why he loved us, what do you think his response would be? Brother Al, you remember about 12, 13 years ago, me and you lived in Canton, coming from Canton, getting on the exit. And he was talking, the radio was on, I'm looking in the mirror trying to get on the interstate. And the Lord spoke to me, I heard his voice out of all the commotion. He said, I would never leave you nor will I forsake you. And I stopped, brother, and I said, hold on a minute, brother. I said, ho, 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 ho. I said, Lord just spoke to me. He told me he'll never leave me, nor will he forsake me. I said, you can read that all day long if you want to, but when the Lord speak it to your spirit and you hear it, the Lord is my what? Shepherd. I shall not want. Huh? When I heard that voice, that, that is about to cast forth not away thou confidence, for it have great recompense of reward. How many want some rewards? 
What about, what about, what about, what about some rewards? Huh? I want some rewards. I want, I want some benefits. <laughs> I want some benefits. When I get to heaven, I don't have to worry about trying to create a dance. I already have my dance. Huh? Work while it's a day. I just said that. You got to do what you can do while it's a day. Because we know the curtains are closed. Ain't nothing you can do. You don't have time to apologize. You ain't gonna have time to say, I'm sorry. You ain't gonna have time to say, oops. The songs I know, some way, I know somehow. Well, let's start over again because we're going to be in unison now. Hold a minute. Clear, clear your throat a little bit. Get the gun out your mouth. Y'all ready? I know some way, I know somehow. We're going to make it with Jesus on our side. We're going to make it. Ah, oh. say sometimes I get so happy. I'm like Pastor Paul, sometimes I want to pull my truck on the side of the road. <laughs> <laughs> it just runs sometimes. Woo. Baby, I was telling him how your, your, your blood pressure dropped down to 45 and we prayed in less than a minute. Blood sugar, okay. What I had, blood sugar, okay. What I said? Oh, blood pressure. <laughs> My blood pressure dropped in the kitchen and I fell to the floor. And my wife had to take a body and kind of knocked me to the side to keep from hitting my head in the glass table. I fell to the floor. Blood pressure dropped so low, the oxygen didn't get to my brain. And the, she said, the doctor said when I, she was trying to call the doctor, or call Pastor Porter, and every time she would call it, she would hit in. <laughs> Less than a few seconds, the blood was back to my brain. I got up, and she called Pastor Porter. Uh, what you tell me? He, was, he all right? He did? Okay. He turned around and went on by his bed. Instantly. He's a God that answers. Huh? If, if, he, if, he, if he grabbed up the Red Sea, he can grab up for you and me. Huh? If he can stop the blood from running out of aneurysm, when the doctor tell you you can't do no good, Somebody talk to me. Let the church say hallelujah. <laughs> That's why I serve him. Because he first loved me. He brought me out of darkness. He gave me peace that surpasses all understanding. If you ain't got no peace, you need to come to the doctor. And get revived. And live for God can use you. Use me, Lord, in thy service. Draw me nearer every day. Lord, I'm willing to run on all the way. How many really to run all the way this morning? Come on, saints of God, raise your hand. Hallelujah. Don't let these bodies drag you down. Don't let the flesh hold you down. You let the Holy Ghost leap in you. You let the Holy Ghost jump in you. You let the Holy Ghost run in you. You let the Holy Ghost shout in you. Hallelujah. Lift up your hands and say glory. glory. We waiting on our, our children to come in. Brother. How would you feel? They not coming today? Come on, brother. Hey man, you were sharing so many testimonies. I want to testify too. All right, hey man. Hallelujah. <laughs> I was just, as I was just uh, looking at this lesson, I've uh, just been excited all week long. Ah. This is my spirit. Um, that question that you was asking, why do God just love us so much? 
So much. And I remember a time. I remember with a time that I, uh, 22 years old, I didn't. I couldn't even. I didn't know no scripture. At 22 years old, I didn't know nothing. Just nothing. Man. Uh, and this scripture right here, it brought so much conviction and condemned me in such a way because uh, I was just disappointed that I didn't know it. I was very disappointed that I did not know it. And my mind just went back when I was 13 years old, hanging out in the streets, uh, in part of a part of gang activity. Um, Let's listen, thanks. And, uh, and I remember 13 years old, was into it with somebody and somebody pulled the gun on me at 13 and they unloaded the whole clip in less than, within 10 feet, within less than, less than 10 feet in front of me. And I only got hit one time. And I didn't appreciate God then either. And I got shot again at 19 years old. Less than five feet away. And I got shot. And, it, and I didn't appreciate God. And got shot again. In prison on a kidnapping charge, facing 30 years, tipped a murder charge, shooting the occupied dwelling charge, aggravated assault charge, things that I actually did, and I didn't appreciate God then. But this glorious gospel, when I just heard it again, hey! Woo! <laughs> it brought back everything that God had already been doing <laughs> down through the year. Down through the year. Down through the year. Yeah. So I can understand why he loved me so much. Because yeah. <laughs> he had a purpose. He had a plan Glory. for my life. And I, get, and I was just up. I didn't go to bed to about three this morning. I just been, I've been bubbly all week long in general. Just excited uh, and I just forced myself just to, just to lay down about three I knew I had to get back up for prayer in the morning uh, this morning as well and I was just just sitting there thinking about all those things and tears just started to move up my hey hey and I just was just thinking like, why me, God? Why me? Why me, God? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. All those near-death experiences, all those things that I went before the judge, guilty as charged. Guilty. Hallelujah. Guilty. Hallelujah. Now, just being just a, a rough house person, people wouldn't even come to try to testify against me. All right. Hallelujah. Just, just being afraid of what could have happened to them if they would have. And I just think about, why me, God? Somebody say glory. Hallelujah. Come on, say somebody say glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This glorious gospel works. Yeah, it pierces the heart, yes, Lord. the intent of the heart. Mm. Hey, Amen. Designer of the soul and the spirit. And I just thank and I praise God. Yeah. Amen. To just be sitting in heavenly places with him. Ah. Amen. I don't take nothing for this journey now. I am so, so grateful. And I'm not ashamed. Hallelujah. I am not ashamed of this good news. Of this good message. 
Hallelujah. Never get tired of talking about it. Go always say it. Sometimes it can sound redundant, but I'm going to say it again. God is a good God. Hallelujah. 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 <laughs> Glory to God. Oh, Lord. And it Hallelujah. Just, it, just, it just stirred up so many emotions in this, in this, this, this glorious gospel. When God allowed me to hear it, you know, and that's, that's a message just in itself. Unless God unstopped our ears to hear it, yes. we'll never hear it. Never hear Unless it. God take the scale off your eyes to see it, yes. you will never see it. Yes, sir. Hallelujah. Paul said it's both God's who work it both to will and to do yes. of his good pleasure. So he generated it all. And I'm so glad. I am so glad. Amen. Because it's the goodness of God that leadeth man to repentance. To just sit there and had a moment to think about it was God's goodness that led, it, that led me to want to change. Because if I had never seen it, I would still have been the scam booger that I was. I would still have been the maniac, the monster that I was. And I enjoyed it. I enjoyed every minute of it until God took the scale off my eye. Lord. Hallelujah. And I'm so grateful I responded to his call. I am so grateful I responded to his call. <laughs> Hallelujah. Glory. Glory. I'm on my way. Hallelujah. I'm on my way. Glory to God. Hallelujah. So it's a blessing, amen. I'm so glad he resurrected me. Amen. And so I just want to share that, you know, I just want to, I feel a little better. I just want to get it out of my system on this morning. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> to God be the glory. <laughs> hey, cup run over. <laughs> Hallelujah. The song said, the joy of the Lord. The joy of the Lord is my strength. 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 Come on, support. Praise the Lord, everyone. I love that song. It's simple, but it means a lot. And sitting here listening to Brother D, um, I discussed two words with my husband. I don't know if he remember. And one was incarceration and shackles. Brother D. Mind was incarcerated. It couldn't go anywhere else. It couldn't let anything in, and it couldn't let anything out. He was in shackles. And until he got to the position that he was willing for those shackles to be broken of the man, he was just there. He was a product of his own prison system. And you know, that's where we are until God breaks those shackles. But he's not gonna break any shackle unless we are willing for them to be broken. We have to have a mind to be saved. We have to have faith in what's there. Uh, you know, I listened to a lot of testimonies and I grew up in Chicago and it was rough, very rough. And I had some rough brothers I was known as Hawk sister. You know, that's Hawk sister, don't mess with her. I didn't consider myself rough, but I had those that were around me that was rough, and they were my protectors. But you know, they were my protectors. And I listened, and I said, well, I wasn't that type of person. I still was a person that was shackled, that was incarcerated with my own man. And I praise God for that. I praise God for that. Your testimony was right on 10. And we need to listen and we need to think. Evaluate yourself. Are you incarcerated? You may be saved, filled with the Holy Ghost, but are you incarcerated? Just because you are saved doesn't mean that you have given up what you need to give up. The title tells you a lot. A glorious God. He's glorious because he's there to provide for you. 
He could have had an incarcerated man and left you out where you were. But we need to evaluate each and every day. Where are we, Lord? What am I doing? Am I doing what I should be doing? Clear your mind. Don't be incarcerated in no form, shape, or fashion. It's the mindset that God is concerned about. Where is your mind? Where is your heart? And I just wanted to show you that because when Brother D went to talk and I thought about all those times being shot at, all those times going before a judge, the shackles still had to be removed. And I just wanted to share that. I hope it makes someone think, where's your mindset? Clear your mind. Where are you in the Lord? That's what matters. Let the church hallelujah. hallelujah. This is going to end our section of Sunday school. We're going to uh, close it out with this song. The joy of the Lord is my strength. 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 He gave me living water and I He gave me living water and I He gave me living water and I The joy of the 